I get one page 179 there. Let me walk through my way with love. Amen. <coughs>
Amen.
slid over to Alabama twice today and uh, come running back in uh, right before time for church. And so pray for me uh, that I'll just kind of get settled into what the Lord would have us to say. Uh, and talk. I thought about I was running so fast to come around loop one and uh, there's a log truck turned over there and just scattered the logs all over the highway. <laughs> And I was glad he wasn't hurt, amen. And, uh, but anyway, uh, I thought about, well, I guess I better slow down and take the cliche my granddaddy used to say. He said it'd be better uh, to be five minutes late uh, than four or five hours dead or something like that, amen. And uh, so I appreciate the privilege to be in church tonight. Uh, look in, in the Word of God in Matthew chapter number 23, uh, 2. And uh, we'll read uh, two or three verses here. And uh, then we'll try to give you a thought the Lord's put on my heart tonight. Uh, the Bible said over in Joshua chapter 1 9 that after we have meditated in the Word of God, then we will have good success. The Bible said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew and uh, the book of Psalm 138, verse number two, uh, he said he uh, magnified his word above his name. Amen. Boy, I thought about that first time I read that scripture, and I said, how in the world could that be? The Bible said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. But he said he magnified his word even above his name. And no wonder that God wants us to uh, get it in our heart, meditate on it, digest it, uh, that we could be the Christians that God would have us to be. Let's look in verse number 27. The Bible said, And at last of all the woman died also, therefore in the resurrection whose wife shall she be? Of the seven, for they all had her. Verse number 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. Father in heaven, we ask you tonight, Lord, that you would let us uh, enjoy your presence. And God, that we would be able to uh, magnify your name. Knowing the Bible said, whether we eat or drink or whatsoever we do, let us do it all to the glory of God in uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, at least 1031. So help us, God, to understand the word of God and let it have lodging in our heart. Lord, uh, taking the scripture to face value, the Bible said, how shall a young man cleanse his way except by taking heed to the word of God. So help us to do that tonight and we'll thank you for it in Jesus name. I was thinking about the Bible and uh, the things of the Bible and I, in 1999 I wrote, uh, wrote this down. It may have been Brother John's it uh, preached it, I don't know, but I wrote it down and I saw it uh, last week and I thought, well, next time I preach, I'm going to try to preach on that thought. And uh, so uh, the Bible said in verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, you do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Whenever we make mistakes in life and we don't do the will of God, it's simply because we don't understand the word of God and we don't take it for faith value. The Word of God helps us to know how to live. I rented a piece of equipment this week over from Yancey Cat and uh, I said uh, I, I told him the name of our place was Abundant Life Farm and it got a good conversation started off. He asked me why I chose that name and boy it just seemed like it opened up the windows uh, to talk to him. And uh, the Word of God does that for us. It teaches us how to live. John 10.10 10 tells us that he came that we'd have life and have it more abundant. So the Word of God also not only teaches us how to live, but it teaches us how to love. Verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thine heart 
and with all of thy soul, and with all of thy mind. I was accused of being a fanatic whenever I first got saved. I wished I was uh, still as much a fanatic as I was then in 1978 or 9. But I uh, said, you know, I was told by this by another fellow. He said, the Bible said, let uh, our, uh, our work be done in moderation. And it really bothered me. You know, I thought, well, maybe I am too gung-ho and too fired up. And so I started praying about it. And I, I realized the problem was that he did, he erred not knowing the Scripture. Amen. Because this verse tells us uh, that you just can't love God too much. Amen. That's right. You just can't do too much for the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, a lot of, and the same fellow, uh, I was witnessing to him and told him, I said, you know, you ought not be smoking them cigarettes because they're not good for you. And I said it out of a heart of love. I didn't want him to catch lung cancer. Amen. And he popped back off at me and he said, well, you, I seen you eating that bacon this morning. That's just as bad as smoking these cigarettes. Amen. Amen. And I thought, well, Lord, I don't guess I can eat no more bacon if that be the case. Amen. So I got to study the scripture and I saw where uh, the Lord let Peter have a big sheet come down and he cleansed all manner. Amen. And got that straightened out. I, and a lot of times people do that. They err not knowing the scripture. Amen. You know what? The Bible is not an argumentative book, but it's an answering book. That's right. And it tells us how to live. It tells us how to love. And then it goes on and tells us how to look. Amen. Right. You know, a lot of times my uh, my grandchildren and different ones that I work around, I'll get on them a little bit about their dress code. Amen. And they'll say, well, now you ought not do that. But the Bible tells us uh, that we ought to know how to look. Amen. We ought to know how to live. And then we ought to know how to learn over in Deuteronomy chapter number six. There's a purpose of getting together that we may learn, that we may hear, and that we may uh, uh, understand what God would have us to do. Amen. So there's a way to listen. And the Bible teaches us that way. Amen. I got this wrote down here. A poor listener seldom hears a good sermon. That's right. That's right. Amen. I heard that many years ago, and I thought, how fitting for that statement to be. Amen. If we don't listen the way we ought to, we'll never hear the sermon that we need to hear. That's right. Amen. There was a little girl down at Tuck uh, whenever we was in Canton, and uh, we left the church. And her name was Beth Hill House. Don't know why I remembered that, but we was walking up uh, the, the driveway, me and my wife holding hands, walking up through there. And uh, she come up to me and she said, good preaching, preacher. And I said, good listening, Beth. Amen. That's what it, you know, it, it's, it's how we listen. And she went on to say in that same conversation, I was telling Carlene some things that I would like for her to see about. And uh, so she asked Carlene, she said, Sister Carlene, she said, do you preach? And she said, only to the preacher. <laughs> But a lot of times the word of God, we need to take heed to it where we learn how to listen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. I found out that my wife is a lot smarter than I give her credit uh, to be. And I've started listening to her here of late. I don't know. Uh, I understand about the submission thing and everything like that. But once in a while, she does have a pretty good idea. <laughs> And amen, if, hey, if, if us husbands will listen to them, we'll get along a lot better at home, amen. Right. Amen. Uh, we, uh, if we treat our wives like thoroughbreds, they won't turn into old nags on us, amen. Thank God for, for a good wife, amen. But we need to learn how to listen. And the Bible teaches us that, amen. So we need to, uh, we need to learn these things. And got two or three things written down here tonight that people err on. They, uh, they're so confused. You know, uh, denominationalism. 
And uh, the, I thought about the Jehovah Witness and the Catholics and the Lutherans and all this that, and other. And their problem is that they don't know the Scripture and they don't study the Scripture because if they did, they would realize the fallacy and the things that they're doing and saying. You know, I'd hate to be a Jehovah Witness because I might not be a hundred, one of the hundred and forty-four thousand. <laughs> But they err about, uh, about the scriptures concerning salvation. Thank the Lord the Word of God is very clear that we get saved by the, by the blood of Jesus. It's a free gift. It's not of works list we have done that we have done. The Bible said, but according to his mercy, he saves us. Right. Amen. Thank God I'm glad that I'm saved in the church on my way to heaven. Amen. And I got it pinned down uh, because I got God's word on it. Uh, I give I gave out many many tracks over the years and it title was you got God's word on it and whenever I would give it out I would try to, uh, to give people a little assurance by this is God said this this is what God said it's not what R.V. Stanley said and if you'll take this for face value you can take it to the bank amen it'll stand it'll stand whenever everything else is on fire but a lot of people get confused about salvation they uh, think, well, and I've heard it said, and you have to, well, when I get to heaven, I believe the good will outweigh the bad. But they're, they're basing their, their salvation on works, right. amen, instead of on the blood of Jesus. And so salvation has to be understood, needs to be understood that it's a gift of God, not of works, least we should boast. Amen. So I'm glad, thank God, that we don't have to be confused about uh, salvation. After I was saved, people said, well, I'm glad you got saved, but there's more to it than what you got. But I studied, studied the scriptures and I found out that over in Colossians, in Jesus Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. Glory to God. Whenever you got Jesus, you got the whole ball of wax. Amen. Thank God. I'm glad. I'm glad to say that I've got the Lord in my heart. Amen. Thank God for salvation. People don't have to be confused about it if they would just read the Word of God and take it for face value. But a lot of times people do get confused about it. And I know you get all kind of answers just like I do whenever you're witnessing. People get confused. They err not knowing what the Scripture teaches about salvation. So thank God we need to take it for face value and uh, we need not be confused confused about uh, about salvation and then people get confused not knowing the scriptures about sanctification you have to work at it it's not something that whenever you get saved that God just sets you apart and you don't have to do anything else. You have to work at being saved. You have to be, work at being not being saved, but being sanctified, set apart. Amen. And so we don't need to be confused about that. You have to put forth an effort. Amen. I passed people all up and down the highway tonight that was going all other places besides the Wednesday night prayer meeting. Amen. They wasn't working at being sanctified. Amen. And people get confused about that. Amen. I'm glad that my neighbors normally see us headed to church on Sunday morning night and, uh, and Wednesday night. I hate when we don't have church on Sunday night. I'm afraid somebody might think we backslid. Amen. But I'm glad. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. We need we need to work at this thing about being sanctified. Amen. 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 About sanctification. What does it mean? I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. If we are, then we've laid our body as a living sacrifice, holy except in God, which is our reasonable service. Amen. So we don't need to be confused about uh, this thing of sanctification. We need to submit ourselves to God every day. And uh, when we get up in the morning, uh, I'm not near as faithful uh, about my prayer life at night uh, as Brother John's. And I got, to, I got to think about it the other night. I was praying about it, and I said, Now, Lord, you know, sometimes I get home at 3 o'clock in the morning. My wife's done asleep. Amen. But it doesn't give me, not, it doesn't give me an excuse not to have my prayer time. 
Right. Amen. And I thank God I, I don't remember, and I, I guess this sounds like I'm bragging, but I don't remember a day that, uh, that I, since I've been saved that I hadn't prayed and asked God to have his will in my life. Amen. <laughs> We was overworking today, and my grandson asked me to go. Asked me to pray. I said, well, "You pray." He said, "No, Grandpa, you pray." Amen. And I think it was he wanted my heart to be softened where I wouldn't want making work so hard. <laughs> Amen. But thank God prayer makes a difference. Amen. Amen. Sanctified. We don't need to be confused about that. Whenever I come home at night, I try my best to have prayer time uh, uh, before going to the house. Many years ago, uh, I came in the garage and uh, Robbie, he was at home that time, he, he had his truck parked in my space. And that bothers me a little bit. I got a place. I like to have my things in a place. Amen. But I came in and Robbie's uh, truck was right in my spot. I didn't like that. I got out and I was grumbling around a little bit. And, and I went up to the house and my wife had supper cooked. And I said, Robbie's truck's in my spot. Where's he at? And I uh, was a little bit, a little bit grumpy. And uh, she said, uh, honey, have you prayed today? Boy, it hit me right in the heart. Amen. I said, yes, but not as much as I should have. <laughs> I turned around and made me a U-turn, Brother Steve. Went back down there and prayed. Amen. When I come back the next time, things were different. Amen. And God, well, prayer does make a difference. We don't need to, we don't need to get confused about this thing of being sanctified. Amen. It's simply giving ourselves wholly unto the Lord. Yes, sir. Presenting our body a living sacrifice, amen, unto God. And then people get confused about submissiveness. A lot of times uh, we forget that we're supposed to be submissive to God. And then uh, the husband submit to God, the wives supposed to submit to the husband. Now, I know a lot, a, lot, a lot of wives don't like to hear that, but if we take the scripture for what it says uh, and read in the book of Ephesians, God said, uh, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So if we take the whole ball of wax, amen, it's okay. Amen. But wife's supposed to submit to the husband. Children's supposed to submit to the wives. All is supposed to submit to the uh, to the Lord. I guess you've heard about the uh, guy was in the office. He had a bad day, and he come home and and he give his wife a little trouble. Uh, and so she was upset, and so she started hollering at the kids, and the kids were going around the house, and <laughs> they didn't know what to do. And they seen the dog laying there on the porch, and they run outside and kicked the dog. It kind of, uh, Brother David said it tonight, amen. You know, it seems like everybody enjoys being mean and being aggravated. And God don't want us to do that. He wants us to love one another. The Bible said love covers a multitude of sin. And so we're supposed to be submissive one to another uh, in the fear of God. Then a lot of time people get uh, confused in the air about this thing of uh, steadfastness. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, the Bible said, Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we'll faint not. If we faint not, we'll reap reward, or reward will faint not. We will reap reward. So a lot of times we, uh, you know, we're here and there, and we don't submit. We don't wait to, uh, for the recognition uh, and the approval from God in submitting to what we should do. And so we have to be very careful about not getting confused about steadfastness. God says be planted in the house of God. He wants us to take root and bloom where we're planted and be steadfast and unmovable always about the work of the Lord. I'm hurrying along. We need to be uh, not confused about soul winning. You know, uh, I've heard Brother John say it before, and I, and I believe and it's the truth. Uh, so winning is uh, whosoever of whatsoever, but it's not whensoever. That's right. Unless the Spirit of God is dealing with you and drawing you, then you can't be saved. 
I remember uh, the first person that I, uh, after I was at pastor school, and they preached that week on soul winning. And boy, they made it big. They made it big. Every preacher preached on soul winning, and so uh, said you wasn't right with God if you wasn't winning souls, and this that, and the other. And so about Thursday night, I I was convinced that I really wasn't wasn't right with God. So I got up to go to the altar and pray, and uh, there was about seven thousand ahead of me. Amen. On the way to the altar, we don't none win souls the way we ought to. But if we'll do our best, uh, let me say this. I don't, I don't say that you're not right with God if you're not winning souls. But if we're not at least witnessing and trying to win somebody, then we're not doing the will of God. And so we don't need to be confused about soul winning. Uh, I wrote down a couple. I asked my wife the, uh, the guy's name. I, I, I just It thrills me. Whenever somebody gets saved, the Bible said the angels in heaven rejoice over one that comes to repentance. Uh, up in Seymour, Indiana, we was leaving Jack Hiles Pastor School that week, coming down the road, and and we pulled up to a gas station. That's been a long time ago. Uh, people, uh, the attendants actually come to your car and filled your truck up. Amen. And so he came. To, uh, he came. His name was uh, is Seymour, Indiana. And his name, I believe, it was John. I forget his last name. But anyway, he came out and uh, he uh, pumped the gas. And I got to talking to him about the Lord. And so he said, you know, he said, I've been thinking a whole lot about that lately. Boy, that's the key. Unless people are thinking about the Lord, unless God's dealing with them. Uh, then there's no salvation. There's nothing that will be accomplished. Amen. So we don't need to get confused about that. It takes the Holy Spirit of drawing, and it takes us witnessing, and then it takes the recipient to believe and trust in God. Uh, the next one I wanted to mention was over in by the Sea of Galilee back in the 80s. Carlene and I was there uh, that week, and we was there with a church group, and Aaron, our bus driver, took us all across and all around. And uh, so uh, that night he invited me to come talk to him. And so I went into his room, brother, uh, and I told him about the Lord and told him what God had done in my life over the years. And so he bowed his head and he asked Christ to come into his, into his heart. His brother was a, a rabbi. And, uh, you know, did all the rituals and everything. And when we got through praying, he looked at me and grinned. He said, you know, I knew God being a reasonable God had to make a way that people could get saved and still live. Amen. His brother done so many different things. And what he was saying was he worked and drove a bus and had a family. But uh, God saved him and thank the Lord for that reality so we don't need to be confused about soul winning just give out tracks and tell folk of what god did for you that's the best testimony uh that can happen that's what the apostle paul did he told everybody everywhere he went uh what happened on the road to damascus amen and so just give out your testimony and uh see what god will do and then we don't need to be confused about the second coming Amen. I'm glad that he could come this very night. It'll be just like a thief in the night of the rapture when he comes. And we don't need to be confused. We don't need to err. There's nothing holding him back. Amen. He could come tonight. And we don't need to err concerning the rapture. Be ready. Be ready to meet him because he's surely coming soon. Yes. Amen. So we don't need to err concerning the, uh, the rapture. Of the church, then the second advent, Brother John's taught us, and then whenever he comes, a second advent, he'll be he'll be coming with the saints. In the rapture, he'll be coming for the saints. I'm sure you remember that. Amen. Thank the Lord. We don't need to be confused. We need to understand and not err. Uh, and so God is coming back soon. So we need to be ready. Yes.
Amen. No matter uh, what kind of things going on in our life, I'm glad salvation is ours to keep. It's paid for by the Lord, the blood of Jesus. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved and kept by the power of God, Brother Avery. <laughs> Amen. If it had been a gift or if I could have worked for it, I would have probably lost it a couple of times this week. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad it's given to us by the Lord and it's kept by the power of God and we don't need to weary in well doing thank the Lord don't need to uh, wander around thank God the word of God teaches that the power of God is what keeps us safe we're in Ephesians we're accepted we're sealed in Romans we're kept on and on we can go on but I'm glad that we're sealed to the day of redemption and kept by the power of God. Amen. We don't need to uh, uh, let the devil confuse us. We need to keep our minds on the Lord and not be, uh, uh, don't err by not knowing the scriptures. Whenever we have a question, if we'll go to God and ask him, I found this to be true in my life. If I can get myself yielded enough to that I can I convince God I want his will, then he's pretty quick to answer me. Amen. But as long as I'm praying selfishly or something that I want, you know, he seems like he linger, lingers till I get ready and to get yielded and get ready for God's answer to do what God wants to do. And uh, then, then he'll do that. So let's pray. Father in heaven, help us, God, to be faithful. With our Bible reading, help us, God, to be faithful with our prayer life. Help us to be unmovable, always abandoning the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Just have your blessed will in the church, and Lord, work out your own divine uh, will for all this here. And help us to submit to you, and Lord, to obey you. And we'll thank you for it. Be with the preacher, situation with his wife, and you know the needs of those in the church that have special needs. God, uh, we just ask you to have your will in each and every situation. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Avery.